So I'm going to talk about the uh, the FiberTac soft anchor system that Tom mentioned, and very excited about this. We've been working on this for uh, quite a while, and, and uh, I'm going to show you our short and midterm outcomes with this anchor system. So I was a fellow with Jim Andrews in 1999. It's hard to believe it's been 20 years ago plus. Uh, that's Jeff Dugas on the left, uh, my partner in crime. We, we were fellows together and partners together. And what you don't realize is that in 1999, Jim Andrews did all of his labor repairs open. Um, Pat Smith, some of the guys in the crowd that were with Jimmy back then, remember that he very rarely did arthroscopic techniques. The only arthroscopic labor repairs we did in 99 were slap repairs. And this was the technology. So this was the metal fast tack anchor. Uh, it, was, it was really game-changing technology back in the 90s. Um, anybody that's, that's a little bit younger than me probably doesn't realize that we used to do this, but we would drill the, the metal anchor through the labrum then reach between the labrum and the glenoid to grab the suture and tie the knot and put the knot right on the glenoid. And this, this you know, back in 1999, this was current technology. It was very nice. We, we, we thought we were really slick. And if you look at this now, and if I did the same procedure today, you know, I think most of us would, would get sick in our stomachs. It doesn't look very good, but that was the best we had. So what I'm going to show you is how we've improved over the last 20 years. So why use all soft, uh, all suture soft anchors? Well, uh, several authors have shown that they provide e excellent labral stabilization. They're low profile, uh, decreased bone removal compared to traditional larger screw and anchors. Uh, you can do MRIs in the future and other studies without any imaging artifact. Uh, and we've shown that the tunnels heal very well with either fibrous tissue or bony healing or a combination of both. And we have not seen any subchondral cyst formation or tunnel expansion with these particular anchors. So this is an NFL player, uh, Alabama player, NFL combine. Uh, all of our players, of course, go to the NFL, right, Pat? Um, so, you know, unfortunately, every case that I do on these guys generally gets scrutinized by the combine, and so I get a lot of post-op MRIs. Uh, this is one of our players a couple of years ago who was an offensive lineman, posterior labrum, that I had fixed a couple of years before. Uh, they did a one-year post-op MRI at the combine, and, and you can see that the, the area where the FiberTech anchors were applied looks like normal bone. Uh, those red circles are actually the anchor holes. You can see a little bit of a drill hole, but really no, no cysts, no changes, looks like normal bone. A very, very good uh, finding in these FiberTech anchors. So another thing I like about them is permanent fixation. Uh, I think that many labral tears don't heal completely after repair. I think you get spot welding at the anchor site. Uh, I've scoped a lot of labrums post-op, both my, ones that I did myself and ones that were sent in for second opinions or for re revisions. And I think you see a lot of this. Baseball pitcher had a slap repair two years pre-surgery uh, for this procedure with a resorbable anchor. Uh, he dislocated his shoulder, has anterior labral tear. But I think in a lot of resorbable anchors, you see these, these loops that are tied. But if the anchor does, if the labrum doesn't heal completely, you end up with a, a loop tied around a, a detached labrum. Uh, with a permanent anchor, you'll have a permanent fixation point. So even if the labrum doesn't heal, at least it's going to be held to the glenoid securely by that permanent fixation. We know that, that Pasquale Below's uh, study back in, in uh, 2006 showed that, that an more anchors are better with labor repair. So independent risk factor was less than four suture anchors for labor repair. And I think about this a lot. I did a case yesterday where, you know, it was a, it was a kind of a quarter tear. It was maybe six o'clock to nine o'clock, not a big labor tear. Uh, probably could have gotten away with three anchors, but in, I decided more fixations better. I put four anchors in, really got both corners fixed well. You know, I think you have to think about this uh, in terms of labor repair. The, the number of anchors, number of fixation points is better. Now, unfortunately, we, we also know that it's stronger fixation. Benton and I have, have, have uh, looked at this, and, and no question, more anchors gives you better fixation, but it also leads to some fracture risk. And I think this is the patient we worry about, especially in contact sports, where you've done a nice anterior labor repair, and then somewhere down the road they have recurrence, and you get an MRI or CT, and you see that they broke through the anchor holes. Um, and, and this is not uncommon, unfortunately, with contact sports. Now, the nice thing about the soft anchors is they're a smaller diameter hole. It's a 1.8 hole rather than a larger hole, so you can put more anchors in the same space with less bone loss and hopefully less risk of glenoid rim fractures. Just the difference between a 1.8 fiber tack and a typical 3 millimeter anchor is 74% less volumetric bone loss, so it can definitely be significant. I'm going to give you some technique pearls that I've learned over the last few years working with these knotless anchors. Um, this is an NFL player that I did uh, Tuesday, actually, NFL defensive back. Uh, it's really important with these anchors to hold the guide steady. 
And for hard bone, inferior glenoid bone, I like to cycle the drill bit. You'll see me cycle it in and out several times. And the reason I do this is that uh, when you're using these, these small anchors, this, this nitinol drill bit is not fluted. It's a solid drill bit, with nitinol wire. And when you drill, sometimes the bone debris stays impacted or compacted within the tunnel, and it makes the tunnel very, very hard in terms of getting the anchor in. If you cycle the drill bit, some of that bone debris comes out and it almost acts like a fluted drill. You don't move the guide because it's such a small hole. If, if, you, if you move just a millimeter, you're trying to put a 1.8 anchor in a 1.8 hole. If you're off a millimeter, obviously you're gonna miss the hole. Um, I like to insert these by hand. I think it makes a huge difference. You'll see this is, you know, I'm just popping it two times with my back of my hand, not very hard. And, and if you're in the right spot, this anchor goes in very easily. Um, it doesn't require much force. You don't have to knock it with a mallet and knock the inserter into the glenoid. Setting the anchor is really important with these soft anchors. Now you'll see I'll pull back on this anchor and it moves about two or three millimeters and then it stops. And I think what happens internally is that you have to develop some friction in the bone to have this anchor kind of ball up and set. And so I compare it to setting the hook on a fish. You have to pull slowly and then when you get to the end, you can yank it pretty good and it's not going anywhere. It's, it's set solidly in the bone. But if you just put the anchor in past your sutures, the anchor probably hasn't completely deployed. It's important to pass the repair suture through separate portals. I think a two portal technique for this is very good. In this case, this is anterior labrum on this NFL guy. I have my disposable cannula in the rotator interval portal and I made an accessory kind of low anterior portal uh, through the subscap for passing my sutures. And I think this makes, a lot, uh, makes everything a lot easier because you don't get, every, get your sutures tangled up. Um, I always like to make sure that my repair stitch and loop stitch are in the same portal prior to conversion. Uh, you know, having trained 120 some odd fellows over the last 20 years. Uh, it, it's, it's amazing to see that sometimes you forget one little step and things go to hell quickly. Um, if you don't remember to pull your repair stitch and your loop stitch out the same portal and you try to zip the, the uh, knotless device down, you're gonna grab a lot of capsule, deltoid, you know, whatever's in between those two stitches will come out in the same, uh, will, will come down to the label uh, attachment, you have to cut it out. So in this case, I put the anchor through that accessory low anterior portal. I grab my repair stitch and my loop stitch out the disposable cannula, and I'm gonna load the anchor that direction. These, these uh, FiberTech knot, knotless devices, KLs, are made with this small uh, little purple mark on the, on the repair suture. Uh, most people don't notice it if you just look at the anchor, but if, if you're used to putting these in, you'll see it readily. Uh, it's important to fold the repair stitch at that purple mark. And what this does is it gives you enough suture so that as you go through the labrum, through the anchor, and back out the skin, you've got a good tail to pull on to, to convert the anchor. If you do it a little bit short of that, sometimes the tail stays inside the shoulder and you have to reach in and grab it with the Schlesinger. So this is that uh, same patient. My repair stitch and loop stitch are out the disposable cannula. And you'll see I just thread the repair stitch through the loop and I'm gonna set it down to the purple mark, which I think you'll be able to see on this video. So there's the purple mark just short. So I set it to the purple mark, I pinch the suture there, and then I'm gonna pull the conversion stitch and, and pull the loop through the anchor and convert the knotless device. I think when you convert these, it's important to pull the conversion stitch through the original placement portal for the anchor. So in this case, I put the anchor through this accessory anterior portal, and I'm gonna pull collinear with the anchor placement in order to convert the suture into a knotless device. This particular picture here is actually a mattress suture at the low anterior part of this guy's glenoid. Um, but as you pull it down, it, it makes it much easier if you're pulling collinear with your anchor insertion position. Uh, occasionally, the, the suture will get twisted. Uh, this is actually Peter Millett's case he sent me. Um, this is a, a beach chair position, as you may notice, but it's easy just to reach in and grab the loop of the repair suture if you see it's twisted. And then what I like to do in a lot of cases, and Peter does this as well, is kind of grab the labrum and put it where I want it as I zip the, the suture down. And this is it, one of the big advantages of this knotless tensionable device is you can kind of gradually tension this as tight as you want to get it and put the labrum where you want it physically through your accessory portal. So my preferred technique, I use the 1.8 uh, knotless anchor every hour in the clock phase. So for a 360 degree, I'll put somewhere up to 10 to 12 anchors, which is a lot of anchors, but when they're 1.8, they're very small. Um, inferiorly, I like to use a horizontal mattress. Peter Millett's shown that that gives you the best fixation uh, with more, low, more normal labral biomechanics. And then I alternate simple stitches back and forth with the horizontal mattress to make it look better. It just, it makes it look more like a rolled up labrum. 
This is a, a technique. This is another NFL player, offensive lineman with a posterior labral tear. Um, I'm going to put an inferior anchor first. This is going to be passed using a horizontal mattress. The way I like to do this is I'll pass the first suture from glenoid to labral side or, or capsular side. I like to load the suture inside the shoulder. You can certainly do this by passing it out a separate cannula. I'll pass the repair stitch through the labrum, then I'll go inside out. So glenoid to capsular side to pass my second loop. I'm gonna grab the suture through the uh, lasso loop, as you'll see, to pass a mattress suture. So the repair stitch will go glenoid to capsule, capsule back to glenoid. So again, this is all inside loading and I'm gonna pull it through. And then as I zip it down and convert the anchor, you'll see that it's gonna pull a really nice labral bumper inferiorly. I think this is important for healing. It brings the labrum up against the neck of the glenoid where all the bleeding bone is, rather than rolling it up on top where it's just articular cartilage. So I think you get better fixation. I'll then, my next anchor I'll do simple because I think the, sometimes with the mattress you, you get kind of a rolled up, torn look in the inner surface of the labrum. Uh, this simple will roll it down nicely and make a nice bumper, especially when combined with a mattress suture. So this is just a simple pass, same idea, pulling the labrum up and getting a simple suture. As you tension these knotless anchors, you can really, um, it, it really is tensionable. You can take them and you can pull as hard as you want to. You can wait a minute, you can pull a little bit more, you can leave them all together as, as Tom showed that video and tension each one separately after you've passed all your anchors but it's a really nice fixation device for being able to decide how tight you want to make it. You'll see how I pull it three or four times and I can really tension it where it's, where it's very tight. When you look at the final picture, I'm going to put my scope in the posterior portal. You'll see a simple on the right and a mattress on the left. And you see how this makes a nice big labral bumper on this, this NFL football player with a posterior labral tear. In terms of outcomes, when I mean, you look at SOS data, uh, it certainly matches uh, the Arthrex Suture Attack data. Uh, in terms of VAS score, so just visual analog scale, uh, very similar scores up to two years. And from a functional score, when you look at the uh, SANE score, simple uh, uh, percentage of, of normal, uh, it's, it's at least as good, maybe better than the suture attack at this point at two years. We, we've followed about 89 patients so far at two years, primarily athletes. And what we've shown is that we had no implant complications, improvement in uh, ASCS, WOSI, and, and VR12 scores and most of our athletes have made it back at a year uh, post-surgery. So in conclusion, I think the FiberTac knotless anchor is, is going to become the gold standard for these labor repairs. Uh, the curved guide is nice for optimal uh, placement. Uh, you can set the hook and pull the anchor where it's very secure. I like to put anchors very close together for better fixation. And I alternate the horizontal and simples just to give the best uh, uh, look and the strongest fixation. But you got to remember these technique pearls.